in this episode of Cars from Japan presented by Cars from Japan, we're reviewing a Nissan Stagia Ortec 260 RS. So what is an Ortec 260 RS version of the Stagia? Well, it's quite simple really. They take the GTR running gear and put it into a Stagia. Why do you ask? Well, the Stagia was pretty popular, even with the RB25 in it and all wheel drive and automatic, etc. But some people just, well, they wanted more. And there were other people that wanted GTR performance in a more practical body, i.e. a station wagon. So Ortec, which is essentially a subdivision of Nissan that does coach building and custom builds, special projects division, they've built quite a lot of special cars, everything from S15s to four-door R32s with NARB26s. And in this case, they took the Nissan Stagia, put GTR running gear in, made it look cooler, and created one of the best wagons ever made. So if you're gonna put Skyline GTR running gear into a family station wagon, you need to make it look at the part. So Ortec gave a unique front bumper, side skirts, rear bumper, rear wing, and basically made the Stagia look more sporty. This is a 99 model, so it's the Series 2. It's a little bit of a different look to Series 1, a bit more modern. This one's a bit better though. It's got it's got N1 style carbon vents in the front bumper. It's got some side vents in the bumper. It's got raised RE30 wheels on it. You can see the wing on the back's pretty cool and some Ganador style side mirrors as well. So overall, this car does look pretty fat. So this is one of the cleanest GTR engine. Oh, it's not a GTR. So if you're wondering why it almost looks exactly like an R33 GTR under here, it's because, well, it's pretty much exactly what it is. You've got the RB26 engine, you've got the twin turbos, six throttles on that inlet manifold. This particular example, though, has some aftermarket air filters, it has a full dump pipe back exhaust system, an aftermarket intercooler, and a Howtech ECU as well. Basically, just drives that a little bit nicer, has a little bit more power without really changing the factory drivability of the car. You get the same five-speed gearbox as the Skyline GTR with its all-wheel drive system the Tesla as well. So overall, you're basically getting a GTR Skyline here, but in that wagon body once again. So the Ortec 260 RS gets the same suspension and brakes as the Skyline GTR as well. This one has aftermarket coilovers though, so it does sit a little bit lower, but the Brembo's have been replaced by some larger Alcon six-piston calipers on this car, which is not a bad thing, because the extra weight of this car means a little bit of extra braking wouldn't go astray. And obviously they look pretty awesome inside the Ray's RE30 wheels. So uh, yeah, pretty cool combo. So as soon as you jump into the 260 RS, you realize that this is the bit that's nothing like a Skyline GTR, obviously because it comes from a Stagia. Firstly, the shape of the dash is totally different, very much more like a normal family sedan. You got heaps more headroom, especially me. I'm used to not having a lot of spare space in a GTR. It feels more spacious and open, obviously, because it's a four-door and obviously a wagon section in the back, bringing a lot more light in. The trim inside is very similar to Series 3 R33 GTR with the red in it, but this has had the normal seats ditched because they don't come with GTR bucket seats. For these Recaro bucket seats were actually really comfy and the Series 3 R33 GTR wheel is gone, replaced by either an S15 or 34 wheel that's been re-trimmed with the red stitching, which modernizes it really well. The big giveaway with the 260 RS though is the triple gauge cluster here. You have a boost gauge, oil pressure, and front torque. So you know, obviously, that that is what the 260 RS has. Very similar to what the 33 GTR has with that triple gauge set. So overall, it's different to the GTR, but honestly, it's pretty comfy to try, but the only way to find out just how comfy it is and how different from a GTR is, is to go drive it, right? Let's go. All right, here we go. I think this is actually my first time driving a Stadia 260 RS. I think I've driven an RB25 Stadia. I've been in an RS, but I've never actually driven one of these. You'd, you'd think I would have, right? Having been around so many GTRs. And the first thing you're gonna ask me is, well, what's it like compared to a GTR? Well, my prediction is it'll just be, I guess, slightly heavier, roomier, more practical, but still have the GTR just underneath. Let's not muck around, shall we? Let's just get straight into what's it like to drive. trying too hard through here. Let's go through 
through here again, but drive it a little bit more like the way you'd drive a GTR. And that's with a little bit more RPM on board. have a couple of mods. It's got coilovers, it's got raised wheels, it's got Alcon front brakes. Uh, it does obviously brake better than factory, which, you know what, in a car that's heavier than a GTR, that's probably not a bad thing to have on this particular example. It hasn't got stupid amounts of extra power, although I am driving it today on like a 35 degree day, so uh, performance is going to be, well, you know, reduced a little bit due to heat soak, but whatever, it happens. The main thing is just trying to see what it drives like, and overall, I will say this, the Stagia feels kind of a lot like what I expected. When I first got in, there's the extra headroom, the extra space, it's not as claustrophobic as a GTR, and that driving experience is, is different. But once I start sort of starting to push through some of these corners and drive it the way I'd expect to drive a GTR with these mods, it drives pretty much the same, but just like, I don't know, how do you explain it? Maybe 10% sportiness has taken off so there's a tiny bit more body roll a tiny bit more lag because the extra weight you're trying to fight but overall the ability to shuffle it through here at stupid speeds is fantastic and obviously i've driven this road in a whole bunch of different cars that i've reviewed but if you drive it like a gtr use the rpm and then it starts to come alive wow <laughs> okay there we go all right that's better that's better so this thing has some Japanese coil of it. So it is, well, it's a little bit stiff over the really bumpy road like this bit. So to make the most of this car, well, in any GTR, you do need some smooth flowing roads, exactly like the one I'm on now. So if you want to drive this thing properly like a GTR, you've got to wring its neck and keep all the RPM over sort of 5,000, because these things are pretty lazy below 4,000, but you can still shuffle it through here without sort of going too crazy in the RPM, conserving the car, you can still carry speed really well. It's pretty fun. I will say this, there are other cars out there that are kind of easier to drive fast where you don't need as much RPM and sort of wring their neck. But when you drive this properly and get some RPM on board and drive it like a GTR, it doesn't disappoint. So do you compare this to a GTR? Well, that would be unfair because, like I said, this is like a GTR with like, you know, 10% of the sport in it's taken off. A little bit laggier, a little bit slower, you know, quite as sharp in the corners, etc. But when you drive it at, you know, eight, nine tenths on the road, most people wouldn't know the difference between this and a GTR anyway. So you kind of get, I guess you do get GTR performance with this, but it's only the hardcore enthusiast that really knows the difference. But it's unfair to compare this to a GTR. You want to compare it to, I guess, well, other station wagons, right? Compare it to, you know, an old BMW wagon or a, a Forester STI or a Legacy GT wagon. Is this better than all of those? Yes, I definitely think it is. Am I biased because I'm a GTR fanatic? Probably. So overall, I'm glad I got to drive the 260 RS. Like I said, I've never driven one. And at least now, I know exactly what they're like. I can tell people what I think and compare them to the GTR and have a good, honest answer to everyone, rather than, I haven't driven one. So there you have it. Thanks to Cars from Japan, thanks to Joe. I can now give you the feedback on a 260 RS. And overall, you get the GTR experience without having, I guess, the sportiness, the look, people staring at you. You get a sleeper and you get something practical. And this particular example, it's pretty good. These Recaro seats are comfy. I like the newest steering wheel that's on. The wheels look great. The Alcons mean that it, the brakes cope with the heavier car a little bit better, which is fantastic. So yeah, overall, pretty cool. GTR without having a GTR.